everyone! I am Miss Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we will learn about the universe in terms of the Big Bang Theory as well as evidence of the Big Bang in the form of red shifting and cosmic microwave background radiation or CMBR for short. This topic is in the IGCSE physics syllabus, so we will only be covering the information that we need to know in order to answer the questions in the IGCSE physics exam. So first things first, here's a little meme for you. The answer to life, the universe and everything is 42. This only works if you are a fan of Douglas Adams who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Let's move on. All right, so let's first learn about the discovery of the universe. So in the early 1900s, astronomers believed that the Milky Way was a whole universe because that was the extent of what we could see. So they saw that it contained fuzzy spirals and thought that these were nebulae. In 1919, an American astronomer by the name of Edwin Hubble used a powerful telescope to look at one of these nebulae and he saw that it contained bright stars just like the Milky Way. The fuzzy spirals were actually galaxies even more distant than the Milky Way. They estimate the diameter of the Milky Way to be approximately 100,000 light years across and the nearest galaxy to the Milky Way is over 25,000 light years away. Now, how do we tell how far away those stars or galaxies are away from us? So scientists are able to use the brightness of the stars to measure how far. However, we won't be learning this right now. This will be covered more when you do A-level physics. Now similarly, scientists can approximate the distance of a galaxy by looking at the brightness of a supernova in that galaxy. So for now, we don't need to be able to measure the distance of the star or galaxy from us, but you just need to know that we can approximate the distance by looking at the brightness of a supernova in that galaxy. Let's just go through briefly about spectral classes. So spectral classes are the categories of stars. If we know the temperature and color of the star, it allows us to divide all stars into spectral classes. So this table shows us some of the spectral classes in terms of the color and temperature of the different stars that we can observe. So based on this table, we'll find that stars that are much hotter, for example, stars in spectral class O, in a temperature region of 25,000 to 50,000 Kelvin, the color is blue. Based on this table, you can see that as the temperature of the star decreases, the color of the star changes from blue to white to yellow to red. So our star in our solar system is yellow in color, which falls in the spectral class G, where the temperature of the star is between 4,500 to 6,000 Kelvin. Now, do we need to memorize all the spectral classes? No, we do not. You just need to know that there are different spectral classes of stars and the classification is based on their color and temperature. Now, we can further classify the stars if we know their composition. And this can be done by studying the absorption spectrum of a star. You will learn more why we see the patterns of absorption spectrum when you do A-level physics. Now, each element within a star has its own unique absorption spectrum. The dark lines at the different positions and different width depending on the chemical element. What are absorption and emission spectra? Now you don't really need to know much about spectra when it comes to this topic in your IGCSE physics, but I'm just going to touch on this so that we know what we're looking at. Different elements have different absorption and emission spectra. As you can see from this table, when we compare sodium, nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen, you can see for these four different elements, the lines are all at different positions. What are absorption spectra? The absorption spectrum shows us which wavelength or frequency of light is being absorbed by that element when we shine light on it. So remember that white light is a combination of all the colors in the spectrum. So if we were to shine white light onto sodium, the black lines here indicate the frequency or wavelength of the light that's being absorbed by that particular element. The emission spectrum shows us the wavelength or frequency of light that's being emitted by that particular element. And you can see that the absorption and emission of each respective element are just the inverse of each other. By observing the absorption spectra, 
we will be able to determine what kind of elements exist in that particular material. So the purpose of the absorption spectra in this context enables us to determine what kind of elements are being emitted by that observed star. For example, if we were observing the light from star X from far away, and as you can see, this is the absorption spectrum for star X. Now, how do we determine the elements? We can line up the absorption spectrum for star X against all the other known spectra of various elements and see which lines line up. Based on this diagram, you can see that the spectrum for star X is not identical to any single element. But there are some lines that line up with various elements. So what this tells us is that the spectrum for star X is actually a combination of different elements. To identify the elements, we need to see which element has spectrum that lines up with the black lines in the spectrum for star X. So for example, if we look at hydrogen, we can see hydrogen only has three black bands and all three black bands exist in the spectrum for star X, which means that hydrogen is present. When we look at krypton, we find that some lines match up and some lines do not, which means that krypton is not part of star X, because if it were, all the lines should be matching up. This also applies to oxygen. The oxygen lines do not quite match up with star X. When we look at helium, you find that all the black bands in helium do match up with the lines that exist in star X. There are probably other elements as well. As you can see, there, there are some lines that are not in hydrogen and helium. But just based on this alone, we can now determine that hydrogen and helium are some of the elements that make up star X. So using spectral analysis such as that, we can now extend the spectral classes table to include their chemical composition as seen in this table. Now let's talk about the Big Bang Theory. No, not this Big Bang. Let's talk about this Big Bang. Now, what is the Big Bang Theory? The Big Bang Theory is one of many theories about the formation of the universe, and it is currently the most widely accepted theory because of the overwhelming amount of evidence that supports this theory. The Big Bang Theory is this. Around 13.7 billion years ago, everything in the entire universe was condensed in an infinitesimally small singularity, a point of infinite denseness and heat. Suddenly, an explosive expansion began, ballooning our universe outwards faster than the speed of light. This was a period of cosmic inflation that lasted a fraction of a second. When cosmic inflation came to a sudden and still mysterious end, a flood of matter and radiation, known as reheating, began populating our universe with particles and atoms that would go on to become stars, planets, and other celestial bodies. The universe is believed to be continuing its expansion as a result of the Big Bang. Now, what evidence is there of the Big Bang? The observation that the universe is expanding is taken as evidence of the Big Bang. An analogy can be observed with a balloon. So if you take a balloon and you draw points on the balloon where the balloon represents space while the points as galaxies, if the balloon is deflated, all the points are close together and an equal distance apart. As the balloon expands, all the points become further apart by the same amount. This is because the space itself has expanded between the galaxies. So what is taken as proof of the Big Bang Theory? Red shifting galaxies and cosmic microwave background radiation, known as CMBR for short. We will be covering these two in the following slides. On the right here is just a funny meme for you, which I guess a lot of people find to be true where they learn scientific facts. Anyway, let's move on. Let's start first with the concept of rate shifting. First of all, let's look at the visible light spectrum. Now, the visible light spectrum is one of the concepts covered in the topic of electromagnetic spectrum. The visible light spectrum is the section of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum that is visible to the human eye. So generally, you need to know that light is made up of many different colors, and the order roughly follows the rainbow color, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Red has the longest wavelength, while violet has the shortest wavelength. What is redshift? 
Now, in this video, I'm not going to go through what rate shifting is because that concept will take quite some time, so I'm only going to go through this as a quick overview. However, I do have a video where I explain rate shift in much more detail. So if you don't know what rate shifting is, please watch that video which I have created as a link in the description below or a card which I hope to remember to include over here. Now, redshift is considered to be evidence that the universe is expanding because the spectral lines from distant galaxies appear to be redshifted. That means they've shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. Now, remember that among all the visible light colors, red has the longest wavelength, and as we go across the spectrum, the wavelength decreases. So if the light from distant galaxies appear to be shifting towards the red end, that means the wavelength is increasing. So the light waves are being stretched by the expansion of the universe, causing the wavelength to increase, or you can consider it as a frequency to decrease. This indicates that galaxies are moving away from us. When we observe the light spectrum from more distant galaxies, they appear to be even more red shifted than the nearby galaxies. Astronomers have found that the greater the distance of the galaxy, the greater the red shift. This indicates that the further the galaxy is from Earth, the faster it is moving away. So this suggests that the universe is expanding and that supports the Big Bang Theory. So to help you see this visually, let's say the center absorption spectrum is the light of a star that we know of. So you can see these are all the black lines on the absorption spectrum. If the light has blue shifted, you'll find that the lines have shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. So for example, you can see this band has moved towards the blue end, towards the right, this band has moved towards the right, and so on and so forth. All have been shifted towards the blue end. They're not all blue, they have just shifted to the blue. If the light has blue shifted, it means that the object is moving towards us. However, if the light has red shifted, which means that the light spectrum has shifted towards the red end, as you can see, this band has moved to the left, this band has moved to the left, and so on and so forth. Again, they're not all red in color, it's just that they have shifted to the left, towards the red end of the spectrum. A red shifted light means that the object is moving away from us. So here's a high IQ comic, only for those who now know what blue shifting and red shifting means. So if you never knew about this, this comic would make no sense to you. So you can see that when the car is approaching, it's blue in color, blue shifting, whereas when it's moving away from us, it's red shifting. And they've even drawn the size of the car to represent the wavelength. It's smart, right? High IQ. So. Now that we know what rate shifting is, we are able to compare the different distances of various galaxies. So if we were to compare the absorption spectra of the stars of different galaxies, we'll find that the lines have the same characteristic pattern, which means that the element can still be identified just like what we did earlier. But we'll find that the spectral lines have all shifted. Based on this comparison, we'll find that all of them have shifted towards the red end of the spectrum, meaning they've all red shifted. The more distant the galaxy, the greater the increase in wavelength, the more the lines have shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. So what this tells us is that the greater the distance of the galaxy, the more red shifted the light is. So why do the light from distant galaxies undergo red shift? This can be explained by the concept of the Doppler effect. So as mentioned earlier, I'm not going to go through the concept of red shifting and Doppler effect in this video because that will take quite some time. In this video, we're only going through an overview of this topic. So please watch my video on Doppler effect and red shifting for greater understanding. Now let's go through the second proof, cosmic microwave background radiation. What is this cosmic microwave background radiation? So in 1927, Georges Lemaitre proposed that the universe begin with an explosion called the Big Bang. Hubble's research into the redshift of galaxy light showed that the universe was expanding and that the galaxies had originated from a single point. If the expansion of the universe was reversed, then everything would revert back to a single point. In 1948, it was suggested that if the universe started with an explosion, there should be microwave background radiation in space left over from the explosion. 
in 1964, radiation in a microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum coming from all directions was discovered. It was at a generally uniform temperature of 2.73 Kelvin. This radiation was called cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMBR for short. So when you look at the term, cosmic means outer space, right? It's called a microwave because it's an electromagnetic wave with the wavelength in the microwave region. And because it exists in a background, that's why it's known as background radiation. So CMBR was not detected earlier as the microwaves were absorbed by the atmosphere, so we could not detect CMBR from Earth. However, when space flight was developed, astronomers were able to send telescopes into orbit above the atmosphere, and that was when we were able to detect CMBR. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum, as you should know by now, and microwaves lie on the larger wavelength end of the spectrum. It's not as large as radio waves, it has a higher frequency or shorter wavelength, but among all the electromagnetic waves, it is the region with a more significantly larger wavelength compared to the others. So you can imagine that back then, when the explosion occurred, it may have been in the gamma ray region, and as the universe expanded, so did the wavelength of this radiation, and today it has expanded into the microwave region. So the wavelength has expanded over billions of years. Now the discovery of the CMBR is a second piece of evidence to show the expansion of space and supports the Big Bang model of the origin of the universe. It is a type of electromagnetic radiation which is a remnant from the early stages of the universe and has a wavelength of around 1 mm making it a microwave, hence the name cosmic microwave background radiation. So the short wavelengths of the gamma radiation emitted in the initial explosion are believed to have become stretched due to the expansion of space into longer wavelength microwaves. Will they eventually become radio waves? If this theory was true, then yes, this background radiation, which is currently microwaves, will eventually expand to become radio waves. What happens after that? Well, I guess we'll find out. So a little bit more about the cosmic microwave background radiation. This is the closest image to a map of the observable universe. The colors here represent the different temperatures of the universe. So red, orange, and brown regions represent warmer temperature, which is where a higher density of galaxies are found, whereas blue regions represent cooler temperatures, which is where lower density of galaxies are found. So the temperature of the CMBR is mostly uniform with very minor temperature fluctuations. This implies that all objects in the universe are fairly uniformly spread out. And that is it for this video. So if you found this video to be helpful and educational, please click like and subscribe for more physics lessons from your physics teacher, Ms. Ho. Help me keep making free educational video lessons and lab practicals. Donations are welcomed at my coffee page. That's ko-fi.com slash physicsrocks. For access to notes, quizzes, and syllabus updates, please visit my website at physicsrocks.com. Happy studying!